back here in the zone, and you may have heard that there is apparently a loneliness epidemic, Ooh. not just here at home, but yeah. across the country. My and gosh. here in D.C., believe it or not, in this area, it's even worse. Almost uh. half of D.C. households consist of just one person, of course. That'll make you feel lonely, that's for sure. <laughs> Mimi Montgomery with Axios reported on this. Uh, she's live now to break it all down. You know, you, you laugh and you say with Jess maybe at times, but it, it's something serious, especially, I think, in this post-pandemic world where people really don't even have to leave their house to do anything. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, we know that loneliness, um, isolation can lead to, you know, obviously mental health um, effects like depression and anxiety, but it also can have effects on your physical health too. You know, it can lead to higher rates of um, dementia, diabetes, things like that. Um, so it really can have an impact on you. And yeah, to your point, you know, Half of the households in D.C. are single-person households, and obviously, being alone doesn't doesn't automatically equate to being lonely. But we do also have data that folks who do live alone are more likely to self-report feeling depressed. Mm -hmm. um, and I did speak with a local psychiatrist who said that she's hearing from a lot of her clients that you know they're really feeling like they're having a hard time sort of making those social connections after COVID. Right? You know, mm -hmm. they sort of maybe lost that social touch or sort of got into habits where they weren't as social and are still feeling like, you know, they don't go out as much. And she says people are really feeling lonely. Hmm. I, I wonder how our social activities, how that affects this, uh, this data here. I know that even before COVID, a lot of what we do here, the younger people, we go out to bars, we go out to clubs, et cetera, without making that real personal connections with mm. individuals. So does all of the activity that we have to do here, ironically, make potentially that feeling of loneliness even higher? Yeah, that's a good point. I talked to folks at two different groups, so City Girls Who Walk DC, which organizes um, regular walking meetups between women, and then DC Fray, which does a lot of sort of like adult sport leagues. And they both said that they've seen a lot of folks coming to them who are sort of, to your point, you know, looking for those really deeper, meaningful connections and not just sort of like chatting to folks like at a loud bar, but going out and doing activities that really foster this, this you know, connection and conversations and sort of getting to know people on a deeper level. So it does seem like people really sort of are craving those uh, more meaningful connections, especially as so much of us are spending time by ourselves working from home now. Yeah, and I wonder what makes it so unique about D.C., uh, Mimi? Is it the fact that uh, most of us are here because of work? Sure. Work has driven us to this we area. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're either tethered to our computers at home or you're going to the office, you're not getting out as much. You're, I mean, what exactly is it that makes it even worse here in, this, in the DMV? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't have any direct data to speak to that. Um, you know, but to your point, it is interesting that the the rate of one person at households here in D.C. is higher than in cities like New York, Chicago, L.A., Atlanta. Um, you know, but in talking to folks, you know, it seems like a lot of people feel like there is, you know a really big emphasis on work here. People are really committed to their work. They work long hours um, and, you know, they might not sort of at the end of the day take the time that they that they need to make these sort of like meaningful social connections. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, back before I met my beautiful wife when I was out here in these streets, Marina, <laughs> I, I also felt a lot of this and, and so I had desires to kind of, as you're alluding to, to play more intramural sports. Uh, there's a couple of uh, websites out there that talk about like groups getting together who are also feeling the same ways. Do you have any, uh, any information on what people that are feeling this way, what they should look towards? Yeah, definitely. So the psychiatrist that I spoke with, she said, you know, if you have an existing friend group, really sort of make it a routine to reach out to them more often. And if you don't, she recommends finding an activity, like you said, that you really enjoy and finding a group that sort of is like routinely meeting or volunteering. Not only will you meet people, but it sort of is like a, a boost of serotonin to do good for other people as well. Um, and then folks also recommend pets, you know, oh, having yeah. an animal is a form of companionship, but then also you can take them out to dog parks, places where you can chat with other folks about this pet and it's sort of like you know a social lubricant if you will to help you sort of meet <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely i mean here's the thing like the dog you go out you go to the dog park you meet somebody you else meet the people. Dog. Yeah. yeah so all of a sudden people may not know your name but they know coco's That's name right, right? and then <laughs> they associate you with your dog or whoever i think i think you're onto something mimi thanks for the article i think you're right we have to make a, especially as we move on to the spring summer That's months right. a greater effort to get out there to get socialize out and meet people definitely